Zombie Big Whites. Big Whites, or Dabai, indicates an army of frontline COVID workers clad in white hazmat suits. They include volunteers, medical staff, and local government employees. The nickname comes from the Chinese name for the white robot Baymax, featured in Big Hero 6, Disney's 2014 animated feature film. Under China's zero COVID measures, the force has become the government's social interface for managing coronavirus outbreaks. Since then, the big whites have been the omnipresent figures on the streets and in cities nationwide. However, as reported by Bloomberg, big whites have created public anger. They engage in absurd activities, such as disinfecting empty streets, or brutal behavior like mauling pets, mistreating the elderly, or barricading people in their homes. A video posted on July 2nd shows another weird scene of Big White's scaring netizens. A group of hazmat suit clad workers is disinfecting the street with an awkward gait. One netizen says it is a nightmare to see that army. Another comments that this is like the world of zombies. Giant pandas have eaten bamboo for six million years, fossils revealed. WeChat public account World Wide Web posted on July 2nd. Showing new findings related to giant pandas' eating preferences. Given fossil study of the sixth finger of early giant pandas, Chinese and American scientists have discovered that they have preferred to eat bamboo for at least six million years. The results have recently been published in the international journal Scientific Reports. Unlike other mammals with five fingers on their forelimbs, giant pandas have a sixth finger, an enlarged wrist bone at the front of its palm. It acts as an extra thumb that allows a panda's palm to form an opposite grip and grasp the bamboo. Once top luxury, unfinished complex, now deserted shambles. On June 30th, a reporter visited a site and found a major entertainment and resort complex, OCT East, about a 15 minute drive from Yantian Station, Shenzhen City. The complex was built by OCT Group with an investment of 3.5 billion yuan. Or $522 million, covering an area of nearly nine square kilometers. It is a national ecotourism complex aiming to return urban citizens back to nature. At present, apart from roads, mountains, and forests surrounding the project, there are no finished commercial facilities. Moreover, there are currently no shops in the previously planned commercial streets. Some houses have been left unoccupied for a long time, some villas have outer walls falling off. Weeds in the courtyard and at the front of the door have grown into a shambled mess. Who would have thought this place used to be top 10 luxury mansions in China? Big Whites Take Cattle Away During the Night. One more video about Big Whites was uploaded on July 2nd. It shows some anti epidemic workers in hazmat suits took residents' goats during the night and then put them in a truck. This incident took place on March 7th in Dandong City, Liaoning Province. According to Global Times, the epidemic situation in the city is still grim and complex, with more sporadic cases from unknown sources than expected. As the nation's biggest border city with a population of 2.3 million, on July 2nd, Dandong reported eight new local asymptomatic infections from 0-100 to 2400 hours on July 1st. It's now more than 10 months that the Taliban have formed a government of their own. And these are the Taliban police in Kabul who have just started wearing their formal and official uniform. This is a checkpoint in the central area of Kabul. The Taliban National Police Force is sporting dark green uniforms with the Taliban white flag with black Arabic lettering. Kabul residents welcomed the move, stating that it will improve the security as the government attempts to shift away from using its military forces. Kabul police officials say the new uniform is mandatory for all police forces. The police who come to the territory for Mahal Bandi Delta Kumi no Farmu, 
د تحولاتو په مبین کې هغه هغه معارضو کړیو ته په لاس ورغلی و چې بیا کېدلی شول چې په یو وخت کې ترې استفاده کړې وای او د نظام د خطر سبب ګرځېدلی وای نو په دې مورد باندې د مشرته بلې خوا ځانګړي ناسته وشوه او پرېکړه وشوه چې باید پولیس په یو ځانګړي جدا یونیفورم باندې سمبال شي The rollout is starting with 20,000 uniforms mainly in Kabul and Kandahar provinces. But that number will reach up to 100,000 in the next couple of weeks across the country. As the first pair of 500-meter long rails was slowly pulled out of the transport wagon, the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway saw the laying of ballasted tracks begin on its main line. A senior manager with the Indonesian Chinese consortium PT Karita Sipat Indonesia China says that the railway project will promote green and sound development for Indonesia. Uh, first of all, I think this project uh, in the future is going to cut down traveling time between Jakarta to uh, Bandung. Currently, we need three to four hours uh, by car, by bus. or other related uh, four wheels uh, vehicles uh, towards uh, Bandung but with this high speed uh, railway uh, Jakarta Bandung it only takes 30 to 40 minutes uh, from Jakarta to Bandung second uh, i believe that uh, we could reduce uh, carbon emissions uh, by having uh, well design advanced uh, electric uh, train third this uh, high speed railway Uh, Jakarta Bandung uh, up and running uh, there will be new uh, pockets of economy and that will create uh, jobs for people because new businesses will come uh, to those new economies along the road KCIC is a joint venture consortium of Chinese and Indonesian state owned firms that runs the 142 KMHSR train project linking Jakarta and the capital of West Java province of Bandung The senior manager said he is excited to participate in such a project that will benefit the local people. He also says the two countries cooperation under the Belt and Road initiative is win-win, from which both countries can learn from each other. Belt and Road initiative I think is a very good uh, initiative that was uh, proposed and brought forward by the Chinese uh, government. It it opens up uh, new opportunities uh, for Uh, not only the Chinese businesses, but also for for us uh, as the business partners, uh, we we learn uh, about how the, the the Chinese are doing business. We learn about uh, the Chinese uh, technology and how far uh, the the Chinese have have grown and have improved uh, their their the, the life of the people for the past uh, 10 to 30 years. Uh, so I think this is a uh, a two way kind of a uh, partnership where where the chinese government and businesses are bringing uh, new uh, technology and new knowledge uh, to their pa- partners and in their their neighbors uh, at the same time the neighbors and the partners can can learn a lot uh, from from the the chinese uh, people from the chinese uh, companies and and after this uh, partnership what i see is a win win Uh, situation whereby uh, us as the neighbors of of China can can get uh, modern public infrastructure. Uh, we can get a uh, new uh, technology uh, taught uh, by by the uh, Chinese and uh, for the Chinese government and for the Chinese businesses, uh, accessibility can be much better uh, moving forward. You know, uh, now with the railroad, with ports. uh definitely uh accessibility will be uh, much better uh, in the future under china's zero covid policy strict lockdowns were imposed on millions of chinese residents in shanghai beijing and other cities the policy also requires people to undergo countless rounds of covid tests Recently, scuffles allegedly broke out between Beijing's public security officer and the town management staff. Netizens who broke the news said that the town management staff were responsible for COVID epidemic prevention. One of the staff refused to let the police officer pass. The police did not take the COVID tests for many days and couldn't provide a nucleic acid certificate. The police said the town management person was obstructing him from doing his duties. 
so he got out of the car and handcuffed him. A video shows the police violently trying to handcuff the man wearing a uniform with the words Changyang Town Management printed on it. The staff member was finally pinned down to the ground. On June 30th, the incident was later confirmed by the Fangshan Public Security Bureau of Beijing. Accordingly, a public security officer from the Guangyang Police Station under its jurisdiction got into a fight with an epidemic prevention staff member at a village in Changyang Town on the 28th. Fangshan Public Security Bureau added that the police officer involved had been suspended from duty. The incident is now under further investigation. The armed forces of the Russian Federation continue the special military operation in Ukraine. The enemy suffers considerable losses on all front lines. Three battalions from 10th Mountain Assault and 72nd Mechanized Brigades have lost over 50% of personnel near Verkhnikamenka and Zolotarovka just in the past 24 hours. Russian aerospace forces have launched a high-precision attack at provisional base of the 1st Battalion from the 30th Mechanized Brigade. The attack has resulted in the elimination of up to 120 Ukrainian servicemen and about 15 units of military equipment. In addition, Russian aviation has neutralized the provisional armament and military equipment storage base of the 10th Mountain Assault Brigade deployed at the territory of a tractor plant in Kharkov. The attack has resulted in the elimination of up to 30 servicemen and 10 units of armored and motor vehicles.